What's the deal, people? It's your boy Nigel Byam, and we out here in New Rochelle recording another dope video for Insight TV. Today, we got an amazing person featuring a professional basketball player, a model that also models for Nike, and also an entrepreneur. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's go. So we're here with our special guest, the pro ball player, the entrepreneur, the model, <laughs> you know what I mean? All those amazing things. So I always like my guests to introduce themselves. So I'm going to let you take that over. Go ahead. Appreciate it. Um, my name is Tariq, you know, Tariq Crown Jewel, you know, I'm from mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Um, Brooklyn. <laughs> man, got a, got a clothing brand, official Crown Jewel, we're working mm -hmm. on that. I play basketball overseas. <laughs> You know everything. Um, Germany, uh, Argentina, Indonesia. You know, travel. I've been around. I've been around. Just a little. Just, just a little bit of traveling. Not much. <laughs> you know what I mean. But I want you to tell us a little bit about your childhood, growing up playing basketball. Like a little bit of that. Oh um, well, I had three uncles. You know that I looked up to, uh -huh. and they all had their own skill set. So one was the ball handler. Okay. One was the jumper. And the other one's the IQ. Right. So I, watching them, you know, they pretty much made the game exciting. You know, they, mm. they, they reeled me into it. Right. And then from then, that's when I, NBA, college, LeBron James, Derrick Rose in Memphis, of you know, course. that, that era. Right. And then from there, you know, you just, you just, you just want to go out there and try these things. And that's when I realized I also have the, you know, the bounce too, the dunk, <laughs> and, you know, and just make, make it make sense. Okay, that makes sense. Because, I mean, with me personally, it's always a shock to people when I tell them the first time I dunk. First time I dunked, I was 12 years old. So what was the first time yeah, you dunked? Yeah, uh, 16. That's crazy. But the rim was a little like 9 feet, 8 feet. <laughs> I had to get the feel for it. Right, right, and then right, by, right. by 17, I was dunking on 10 regulations. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. All right, so what got you, you know, I know you went the Juco route, mm -hmm. right? So I wanted to chime in on that a little bit because, I, you know, I also went the Juco route. So um, I don't think people understand, like, the importance of the Juco route yeah. or how difficult, I yeah. should say, it can be. So tell them about your experience with the JUCO. Oh um, well, I went to Jamestown Community College, which is like a small campus. You probably go walk around the whole campus in 15 <laughs> minutes. But uh, as far as the environment, you know, it was cool. Uh, I feel like it was what I needed to, uh, like, you know, be better as far right, as like right. mentally, uh, work on my game, and you know, more than I was when I was in high school and stuff like that. And um, as far as connections, you know, mm -hmm. that's when you get into the real world and you start okay. seeing people that can help you put things into place. That makes sense. So mm -hmm. chime back a little bit. What high school did you go to and did you play basketball there? Yeah, I actually went to leadership and public service. Mostly I probably never heard of it. <laughs> Whole but, uh, sentence. <laughs> yeah, but that just explained my story. You know, um, it was a high school. I think we was in the B division. Okay. Uh, we didn't have a gym. No hoops. Oh, wow. Yeah, so wow. around That's that unique. time. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. one the time I'm I'm outside, you know, playing against my shadow in the rain. Wow. And you wow. know, those those nights is what made me, you know, just remember like keep pushing. Wow. And I was averaging what like twenty, I think twenty points if I'm not, if I can remember. And then from there, like I said, people come looking for you. Okay. You, you how did well. you get how did you get to the JUCO circuit? Was it was it a an easy route or was it pretty much difficult? Oh nah, it was it, I would say it was easy. Uh -huh. Um the hardest part was really just Knowing who to trust, you know what mm. I mean, and, and then actually taking the right, just being comfortable in the decision that you're making, especially exactly. at a young age. I think that was the hardest part for me. And right. um, shout out to Coach Tippy, you know, to help me actually get my scholarship to Juco. Mm -hmm. Tippy, just yeah. speaking about Tippy, um, you know, he helped me also, yeah, yeah. which is a lot of kids in Brooklyn, around oh, wow. New York City, period. He yeah, helped yeah. a bunch of people. But um, what was your first Juco experience that really stands out to you? Uh, I'd say my first game. Honestly, okay. I had 38 and 15 rebounds. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little different yeah, than the average was. person, but <laughs> but that's that's what that's what really stood out to me. Where it's like I have an opportunity to do something, you know, good for myself and you know right. in my career as far as a basketball player. Wow, wow, wow! So, Juco, you transition into going to St. Francis. St. Francis, <laughs> the great St. Francis that I played for yes, also. Yes. Um, you had an opportunity to play there also. Um, was that the only school? Let's start there. Was mm -hmm. that the only school that you had an opportunity to play for? No, I actually had a few. I had a few offers, okay. scholarship wise, but uh, my predicament, you know, uh, I almost didn't qualify for the because wow. uh, wow. they changed it that year. Um, but St. Francis was a school that pretty much made me feel comfortable. You right. know what I mean? And, and, and that's why I chose St. Francis at the time. That makes sense. So yeah. a lot of people don't understand even the qualifications. Like a lot yeah. of the kids, like all the kids that's watching this right now. 
that's like a real thing that's not even taught in New York a lot. Yeah, you know grades I mean? matter. Grades matter. Grades matter for the most part. Mm. Grades really do matter. So mm. that's extremely important. Um, what made you go to St. Francis? What like solidified it? Mm. You could say somebody's name, like something that made it like, I, I think I could excel here. I mean, at the time, to be honest, it was my daughter. You know, that was the, that was the main priority. Mm. But as far as like within the organization, um, the, the coaching staff, you know what I mean? They was, they was pretty cool guys. You know, yeah. they made you feel like, and then obviously I'm from New York, so that also played a part in it as well. But um, it was just something about being able to play in your city, like kind of yeah. almost playing for the Knicks, you know, something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I definitely get yeah, that. Yeah, so that's exactly why I chose to come back, to come back home pretty much. That makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. So, you know, you let us know a little bit about St. Francis in terms of your accomplishments there, like the team accomplishments, you know, well, what, I mean, what you guys did. Um, well, I was on the honor roll, so hey, the grades matter. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as the team, um, we made it to the NIT. Okay. Um, we were regular season champs, I believe, my first year, which was 2014, wow. 15, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we we had a great group of guys. Uh, it was it was it was enough for me. I had to like kind of fit in because right. we had so much skill, like as far right. as everybody. Um, so I really couldn't play how I you know came from JUCO, just averaging 25, and I, I went to St. Francis averaging eight. Okay. So, but like I said, it's it, not bad at the division yeah, it's one not level. Bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know Don't I mean? get it twisted. But People get drafted at averaging yeah, ten. So. Ten, you know. Yeah. But they helped me grow as a player. You know, they, my athleticism. They use it on the defensive end. You know, I mean? it's mentally it just helps you grow as a, as a player. You know, especially when you're about to graduate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. So, yeah. you know, it's very few times I admit this. Mm -hmm. Very few times. <laughs> very few. What's that? I'm gonna say very few one more time. <laughs> I seen him play in the open run. This is right before your season actually started. Mm -hmm. And it's very few people <laughs> in this world that I believe can jump higher than me. <laughs> and your athleticism is like through the roof. Yeah. Through the roof, through the roof, through the roof, through the roof. So, it's a blessing. Tell, yeah, like, tell me, like, how did you get that? Because I tell people all the time, like, I didn't work for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't do none of that. This yeah. is just something that I could just do. It's gifted. So, tell me how you got that. I, I could say the same thing, uh -huh. but um, as a as a kid, I was always I was active. So I'm the mm. one, you know. When it's time to go outside, we playing tag. I'm jumping over gates, no hands, right. and stuff like that. That kind of enhances you working out, but you don't realize it. Then you know, going to the beach, playing right. in the water. I used to jump through the waves and all that as a kid. <laughs> so that kind of you know enhances your, your body strength, and you right. don't really realize. It. So when you transition into like actually jumping up. Vertical, like the, the fundamentals of how to jump, and you see, you know, the sky's the limit. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Wow. You see, he said, he said it better than me, so I'm gonna just go with his story as well. You know, you because know. a lot of people actually ask me, I, uh, when I travel, I have a lot of fans from yeah. Indonesia, like, yo, how can I work on my jumping ability? And it's kind of hard when you was gifted. I don't know. But <laughs> like, when you think about it, like, uh, we was, I was an active kid, so right. I think that's right. really what played a big part. Because I, I don't really, like, my family athletic, so it could have been genetic, but you know what I mean? Like, I think it's probably genetic yeah, too. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that, you know. that played a part. <laughs> That's that's something people don't talk about, like yeah. the way people look, the way people could jump. Mm -hmm. Genetics, for yeah, the most it's part. genetics. It comes from. Food. And also, um, you know, leaving St. Francis, getting into the division, um, to the overseas market. Yeah. How was that like? Like, was the, was the transition easy? Agents was knocking on your door, like, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? How did that work? Out? Honestly, it was a tough transition, because at that point in my life, uh. You know, I was, you know how you just waiting on something, and but it don't come when you expect it. Right. So I was, like, when I graduated, I think I was home for, like, eight months, you know, just wow. working out. Wow. You know, finding different ways to keep myself busy. And speaking of the modeling thing, I actually, not Nike came before the, in my overseas contract. Okay. So that kind of took me away from the mental of wanting to play basketball. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But then one day I just woke up and I had, like, like 10 followers and fans from Asia. And I'm just like, what's going on? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, what I, didn't, I, didn't, cause I didn't know what was going on. I didn't right. have an agent okay. right away. And then next thing you know, uh, somebody, uh, shout out to my man, um, B. White. He actually put in a word for me and then the guy helped me through my name in the draft. And wow. so that transition, wow. when I finally knew that I had a contract and waiting for me in my email, yeah. It was a relief, but before that, them eight months were stressful. I didn't know what to expect, you know what I mean? I didn't know if my career was going to even go any further than right, where it right. already was, so and it was a lot. That's that's like a huge part, um, just the mental stability of playing high um, college, playing high school, college, yeah, college, professionally. That's a real situation that a lot of people don't speak yeah. about, like how stressful that can possibly be, because, you know, this is your livelihood at mm -hmm, this point, you know? Mm -hmm. having. A kid, or dedicating yourself to you, this. You yeah. got to like yeah. you know, and then to have your career in a limbo. Yeah. 
it's, it's not no joke it's not fun like what would you have to tell to somebody that's in that situation like because i know a lot of people basketball's their life yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean so not getting a contract or not getting a scholarship it can be painful like yeah. how can you you know encourage or tell them advice on how to deal with that um so all the kids and then you know the, the teens growing up wanting to play basketball like most of us i would say stay dedicated you know what i mean um you're gonna get tested you're gonna get tested on everything you do in life but exactly. stay dedicated you know you got to kind of know that this is what you want and you got to make room for it you know you can't be trying to do two things at once you know what i mean like trying to run the streets and play basketball it don't work like that right so you really got to choose your path and, and and just hope that you know the best comes for you that's what's up that's, that's, that's up. honest because even then like i said dealing with agents and stuff you never know i went through three different agents before i actually got comfortable to where i was like you know i'm gonna just do it on my own wow and wow my first agent didn't even give me nothing, you know, and it happens, it happens exactly. A lot. <laughs> Believe um, it or not, a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, did I, I don't think, I don't know if I signed with the second agent, but the third agent I came across, I gave him an opportunity, he helped me get to Slovakia. Okay. But as a, once again, you know, it's 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 kind of up there. Once you get there, it's just, no, there's nothing you can do but yeah. go through the process. So it hmm. wasn't a great situation. Don't get me wrong, I'm blessed because I'm sure a, a bunch of other people would want to be Any in that position, situation. but. Yeah. That overseas lifestyle, playing overseas is not, it's not sweet. It's not funny games all the time. <laughs> that's, that's a big deal. That's, I'm just being honest. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's what people need. Yeah. That's what we really need, like mm -hmm. the rawness of what it really is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So your first contract Indonesia. came about, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Like getting to the country? Have you traveled before? Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, yeah. So what was that like? Um, I haven't gotten on a plane many times before, as far as recruitment for college going to right. that. But St. Francis, I mean St. Francis, um, Indonesia was a long trip. I think it was like, what, 21 hours? It's 10 and 11 hours on a plane. Ooh -wee. But when I got there, the environment was beautiful. Like the weather was hot. It's, it's hot all year round. Wow. The people were nice, you know what I mean? As far as the fans of the basketball, they, they really love it. Like it's like a culture out there. So, you know, I'm traveling sense. from city to city within Indonesia and we playing tournaments like weekend games so we have a series in this city and in this city you get to see the different friends from all over wow, just coming wow. to watch you play yeah. and honestly that was my that was my best my best year as far as a pro as far as fun yeah that was my best year and the that, money everything was good that's yeah. that's that's like a huge aspect of just playing professionally um i always tell guys you know guys that i mentor mm -hmm. um guys that i work with helping them market themselves and stuff like that if you don't adapt to the culture yeah you're gonna have a long eight months yeah, like sure. it's gonna be <laughs> might feel like two years yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be extremely difficult mm -hmm. to you so you know after that situation like what was your what was your mood like with basketball and everything what was honestly that like? i wanted to go back to indonesia <laughs> like i okay. told him you know I, I i was willing to have my career there at the time being you know especially coming from new york you don't really know right, too much right and then you when you, like i said before you get to experience what it actually is like speaking from guys like you you know yeah. you know you might have told me hey if you find a, a situation that's paying you well, stay with it. Rock with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because obviously, you know, most of us, we want to play at the highest level. We want to play, you know, for the most money because it's, it's money out there to be yeah, made. Of course, tons of but it. But like I it. said, that pro life, when you come across something good, you got to kind of stick with it. You can't Concrete be, yeah. 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 So at that point, that's, I wanted to stay there, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't happen. They didn't, I okay. didn't go, I didn't go back. And it was okay because I just felt like it wasn't meant for me to stay there. So what was your next move? What was the next um, move? After that, I believe I went to. I want to say Slovakia, if I'm okay. not mistaken. If I can't, yeah. Which wasn't the greatest situation. Yeah, it but. wasn't. I, if I can remember, it wasn't a great situation. I yeah. only went there two months. I played, uh, I got there mid-season. Okay. And okay. I know the record was like 2-17. and 17. And you know me, me being from New York and having this ambition, Working hard, they like, yo, we want, we, want you to, we want you to pretty much help us make the playoffs. Okay. And in my mind, I'm like, all right, I have a goal, you know, and when I got there, it wasn't, it wasn't that easy, <laughs> you know, it did not work out that it way. It wasn't what you expected no, for the most part. It was an opportunity for me to obviously, you know, film, a little right. resume, keep my resume alive, and that's what I noticed, you know, when it was all over, and that's when mm. the basketball, the, the professional career started becoming like a burden, like it was wow. stressful a little bit. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So. That was your second year. Yep. So third year now. It was going into Argentina. Argentina. And How was shout that? Shout out to like? Chris Hooper for you know plugging me in for that. Chris, one. what up? Oh, <laughs> St. Francis alumni as well. Yes, Chris. Good, yep. great dude. Great yep. dude. But yeah, that was that was a great experience, you know, because I actually got to play with somebody I, went to, I was playing with in college. Okay. Yeah. So we both was out there. Like once again, the weather was nice all year round. Mm -hmm. You know, the people and the the culture. 
the food was, you know, like Spanish food, you know, so. We rock with that. Yeah. We used to that in New York. Yeah, because the Indonesian food, I couldn't really get with it. Right. Yeah, I, was, I was eating at American restaurants. Ah. But as far as like the food that, that was being cooked in Argentina, I was, I love it. The sado was, was amazing. <laughs> 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 yeah, shout yeah. out to Obera. Shout out to Obera. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, though. That's what's up. So, um, being able to play with a, a, a teammate mm -hmm. overseas from college and you get a chance to play with him overseas what was that like that was that was honestly a dream like yeah. that was something like most people I, I personally feel like most people most players would dream of like right. you know take a buddy overseas and it was great like because it, it just felt like you know what i mean like it didn't feel like a it felt like a job but it didn't feel like a, it felt like a vacation with your homie exactly <laughs> and we just out here just playing ball right right so even at that time like that you know i probably may have gotten not even too comfortable but trying to fit in again yeah. once again and then mm. you know certain things come up so if the team don't we not play we might be losing yeah it's on you yeah exactly that's, exactly. that's what it is so it's i learned that as well you know they they try to you know put it on you mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. at that point yeah you know i mean you go through mood swings so it's like you kind of got to find a balance mm. and at that point that's when i understood like whether whether i'm playing my best game or whether you know I mean, whether mm -hmm. it's after, i have to be balanced as yeah. a pro yeah you know because they look at you you know what i mean so i went from playing literally 30 minutes a game right and it started slowly fading but I think somebody, you know, inside man, you know how right. that goes. Yeah, they, they politics of it all, man. When exactly. politics is everywhere, you can't really run from it. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, you know so what I mean? literally, that, that happens. So. Literally, I went from 30 down to not playing. Wow. And it was, a, yeah, it was a mental thing. So that's a, that was another stage in my career where I had to grow and just move on. Wow. So that, that, that whole mental capacity as a pro, like, I hope people really grasping the importance of, mm -hmm. like, being a pro yeah. and, you know, grasping. The fact that it's mentally draining yeah. if you're not mentally prepared for it all. Yeah, and you're putting all your chips into this basket. That's a fact. But once you go out there to the real world and you start meeting people that don't know nothing about you, <laughs> but you went to a Division One school. Right. At that point, you got to kind of, you know, put your, your personality, everything out right. there. And a lot of people go into these opportunities with the isolation mentality of, it's about it's me, about me. Yeah. and like mm. I said, that's the hard part because you got to perform, but you also got to be a team player. Exactly. So that's why I said that you know the, the mood swings and the balance it becomes like that. And wow, once you find a balance, then you'll be, be able to actually enjoy the life of being a, being pro. a pro. You know what I mean? Being a pro. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's chime back. You know, you, we know you played pro. You traveled the entire world for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, Germany was another spot that yeah, you played yeah, yeah. in recently. Like you know? yeah, we the pro life. Tell us about the modeling. Like, mm -hmm. how did that happen? And the modeling for Nike at that. Yeah, that like, was... <laughs> how did that work out? How did that happen? Man, shout out to Nike. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say. But um, to be honest with you, when I was in Juco, mm -hmm. open gyms, a lot of dunks, pictures. Ah. You know what I mean? So I, I personally felt like, because Nike actually contacted me on Facebook. Wow. They're like, hey, we want to use you for a campaign. And at first, I'm thinking, like, if somebody trying to kidnap me, there's no way. <laughs> Nike just yeah, finds I, me. Yeah, at least email me, but Facebook, but. Right. Like I said, once again, um, you never know where it come from. They bless wow. us. So, but, you know, they just hit me up. And then uh, I think I went downtown to do, like, a little um, audition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. come to find out it was for the same shoot. So I just, like, solidified myself with that. Wow. And then when I'm on set, I'm, I'm, dun I'm dunking. You know I mean, wow. I'm, I'm, they dressing me up in Nike clothes, and I'm just I'm doing what I do best. You know, and like That's I said, from there, I just. And what I learned from there, it was a lot of like models. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider. I mean, I'm a model now, but yeah. you know what I mean. Going into it, I was just an athlete. Right, and right. And that's when I noticed, like, all right, a lot of these guys are literally just models. They can't play basketball. So that's that's what kind of yeah. you know what I mean, glued me in there. Where it was like, all right, it's this genuine energy. Uh -huh. You know what I mean, from a, from a basketball player. And then from there, I kind of like I said, put myself out there. And I'm like, hey, I can do more than just basketball. Like, so I started doing yeah. the uh, train, the, the 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 cross training workouts with right. Nike. I'm doing the running workouts with Nike, and it was a, it's, it's a blessing. And I got posters in the stores and stuff like that. It's that's something you can really you that's really dope. can't. I, didn't, I haven't dreamed of it. That's dope. But that, when that it happened, it's like yo, damn, like it, it's really going that way. For you. Like, <laughs> that got to be amazing, mm -hmm. like amazing feeling, just being you know on one of the most recognized brands yeah. around the world. You're being able to model for them and do different things for them. So yeah. that's completely yeah, amazing. It was great. It was honestly that's great. That's pretty dope. Man. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. So. Apart from Nike, do you plan on doing any more modeling or anything of that nature? Honestly, I actually do want to build my resume, my portfolio as a model uh -huh. because um, I actually see what I what I want as far as like right. the look. You see, know? this is real props, y'all. <laughs> we got another special real, guest. <laughs> real props. <laughs> this is my son, Kaden, everybody, by the way. So say hi, Kaden. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, but yeah um, what were we talking about? Just <laughs> <laughs> Katie just came in there, there. But like your modeling career oh, yeah, and so, building yeah. your profile. Yeah, so I kind of I kind of got a feel from it, you know, being behind the camera, you see what they're looking for and everything like that. Um, I'm a quick learner, so I kind of want to do like the GQ look. Dope. You know what I mean? As dope. I get older and mature, yeah. you know, just to see, you know, with everything and just put it together. That's and, dope. Yeah, I feel like I could do it. That's I just got to find a way and then just put myself out there. You never I, know. That's what it is. You never know. That's really what it is, that's, you know? Take some know. pictures, hit up an agency, they might like what you're doing. That, but just be happy with what you got going on because everybody won't agree with what you're doing. That's all it is. Nobody Find the really balance, ready, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that I'm big on. Everybody who know me personally, mm-hmm. like, they'll say, Nigel, you do the world of stuff. Like, why not? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Why not? Why right. do we have to focus on one specific thing? Like, we could do it all. We got to do everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, like, doing it all. Mm-hmm. You're also an entrepreneur with your yeah. own brand and yeah. like tell us a little bit about that. Man, I'm trying to get like you. <laughs> That's a nice sweatsuit. I'm yeah, not gonna lie to you, you know. but uh <laughs> you <know>. clean. <laughs> but um that was also something like so all right, kind of a little short story. Uh before when I was going into college, mm-hmm. I wanted to go to school for graphic designer. Mm. And again, I had to choose. You know, I, uh the, op- the, op- the options that I had, they didn't have a good basketball program and graphic designer. Right. So once I chose basketball, honestly, the graphic designer just like kind of left my mind. Yeah, yeah. It's and hard then, to be, a, especially a, a collegiate yeah. basketball player yeah. and focus on like a real business, hard almost. major yeah. or business. Right. Or it's, it's difficult. So yeah. yeah. So but yeah, um, went to Indonesia, mm-hmm. bought a laptop off uh, the staff member, one of the staff members for five hundred a MacBook. Wow. <laughs> and then from there, downloaded a software program, how to start designing, uh-huh. and. G- got to the point where before game day, the day before games, I'm up late learning how to use <laughs> my teammate, Arky. Shout out to Arky. He telling me, man, you need to lay down. Put the, put the <laughs> and uh, the biggest thing for me was just being able to um, show my creative side. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. I, 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 I like graphic designing. Right. But then, like I said, with a, with a, with a, with a clothing brand, mm-hmm. you can actually, you know, put your creative ideas on it and, you know, sell it to the world. So right. I feel like that was, that's an op- opportunity for me to, you know, kind of do something I love. Exactly. And make business from it. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That, that whole vibe of, of being able to have your own is yeah. huge. Like, yeah. I, I always encourage people to, like, listen, if you can, mm-hmm. design your yeah. own thing, have your own look, like, get, get it, it out there. Like, why not? The big, like I said, the, the hardest part is really just knowing that this is mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I don't care what nobody really thinks. Don't get me wrong. If it's nice, it's going to sell at the end of the day. But of a lot of a lot of stuff is like personalized, you know what I mean? Exactly. So people got to get to know you and you got to have a story. Sell the brand. Exactly. You got to sell yourself. So I mean, sell the it's, brand. It's, a, it's a lot, but it's, a, it's, it's fun though. Like the yeah. art is it's very fun. Like I said, it, keep, it gives you something to do. Um, and I like learning new things, you know, on the fly. So it keeps you something like I actually ordered the print the press machine to, yeah, to start yeah. doing it myself. So get I'm kind of excited. Yeah, yeah. So I can make it look up, how man. I want it to look. Yeah, that's I'm what's up. So. It's one more thing I got to share with the people, like, apart from your brand, mm-hmm. the shoe. This oh, is something yeah. that, <laughs> this is on a whole different level compared to most people mm-hmm. would ever, ever, ever dream about. Mm-hmm. Having that shoe, like, how did that come about? How did design, like, how did you, how? I don't See, even know. Once like, again, putting yourself out there, you know, like, when you, when you, like, so the biggest thing I think is research. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's that helps you open a lot of doors. You know, uh, it's research and it's pe- who you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, therefore, I was doing research and I came across the opportunity to sign up. You know what I mean? I signed up as a graphic designer because wow. that's, you know, another side of me outside of the athlete. And um, from then, you know, they was, they, I pitched that, the graphic designer, they was like all for it. They gave you a selection of shoes to chose, choose from. I chose the one that looks, New York is yeah, yeah, close yeah, to New York. Yeah. They have some bulky subway surface shoes. They have some <laughs> shoes, some nice shoes, but different. Yeah, exactly. But I chose, I chose the, and then from there, I was in. I was actually in Mongolia at the time, and I, uh, we, I wasn't playing because the Corona thing came about. But that was before it really shut everything down. Right. So I'm just sitting there designing shoes, the design of different colorways. Wow. Yeah, and then I came up. I just, I made like six different colors, and I just chose the final two. Yeah. And I chose the one I feel like that'd just be the most neutral. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And once I put that out there, I had to like sell seven shoes in order like to for them to put it into production. Uh So that put me on the side of actually selling, you know, marketing and selling. So it was another avenue that I had to grow through. You know what I mean? And that's that's what I was saying. So they gave me the opportunity and I just ran with it. That's amazing, Mm -hmm. man. Like your story, just the amount of different things that you get in there. Like it's 
for me personally, I think it's extremely in inspiring, you know yeah. what I mean, in terms of being able to accomplish all these things mm -hmm. and still striving for more. Because right. some people just get complacent, like being yeah. a basketball player, and that's what it is. And you're still striving for so much more, man. So definitely, I want to thank you for being a part of this episode. Thank you. This is, this is, this is a huge episode right <laughs> here. You know what I mean? So, you know, tell the people where they can find you, you know, Instagrams, websites. Instagram, crown underscore jewel, mm -hmm. crown underscore jewel. Uh, my business page is official crown jewel. Um, Facebook, I really don't do Facebook. Uh, my <laughs> website is officialcrownjewel.com. You can go up there and shop. Uh, always keep it updated. I got different stuff coming. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well. It's YouTube. called Around the World. You can find that under um, Tyree Crown Jewel. And that's pretty much about it for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah for it's now. gonna grow, of course. Yeah, clearly, the biggest thing story. about life is really growth and, and, and yeah. inspiration. You know, to inspire people. Up. You never know. That's what's up. So, I always do something where it's like each one teach one moment, mm -hmm. right? So, I want you to give us an inspiring fact or something you can tell, regardless if the person's a kid, adult, mm -hmm. whatever. Tell them something to inspire them. Or to keep them moving, like each one teach them something. My each one teach one moment to the youth, to the rest of the world is that the world is bigger than you know where you're from. You know, I'm from Brooklyn. I grew up in the Bronx, and almost everything I, I can say that I achieved was away from home. You know, so don't be afraid to travel. Don't be afraid to get into new things. Um, definitely, you know, do research on things you don't have you know ideas about, and just be yourself. You know, don't don't chase money. Don't chase nothing that you don't value. You know, have a have some have some morals in life and just go for everything you, you could go for. Professional basketball player, your boy Tyree Jewel is now watching Insight TV.